The history of the fantasy genre is a long and storied one. While many associate the term with typical high fantasy in the form of The Lord of the Rings and its contemporaries, on a technical level, the term can and does include nearly any story that has elements which differ greatly from our own reality. However, there was a time in history where what we now consider fantasy was once considered fact. Contemporary fantasy owes a great deal to the ancient mythologies of humanity where it has borrowed creatures, tropes, and story structure. The myths and legends of cultures past can, in a way, be considered the earliest forms of fantasy storytelling that we know about. But to the people of these cultures, the stories told were held to be more truth than fiction, on both a literal and allegorical level. To the ancient Greeks, stories of the gods and their champions, of the monsters they fought and the deeds they performed, would be told and retold not just for the excitement of their events, but also for the lessons they taught. It should be no surprise, then, that these immortal stories would be preserved well after the decline of the cultures who conceived them, first in the world of theater, and later in cinema. During the 1950s and 60s, films retelling classic myth became very common, to the point that the tongue-in-cheek term sword and sandal was coined to refer to them. Of these many films, one of the most notable is 1963's Jason and the Argonauts. Jason and the Argonauts is the story of Jason, the heir to the kingdom of Thessaly, a throne that is rightfully his but is occupied by a false king. In order to reclaim it, the young prince embarks on a great quest to retrieve the Golden Fleece, the magical hide of a mythic beast at the edge of the world, in order to prove his worthiness for his throne to both the gods and his fellow man. Along the way, Jason and the crew of his ship, the Argo, encounter exotic lands, dangerous monsters, and the politics of Mount Olympus. Jason and the Argonauts is a historic film, famous for its stop-motion creature effects, which are heavy refinements of what was seen only a little less than a decade earlier in films like The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. In a way, Jason and the Argonauts is fantasy movie royalty, a codifier of tropes large and small, and a massive influence on fantasy films that came after it. This is true also of the myth, which is one of humanity's oldest stories of a brave hero embarking on a quest for something greater than himself, only to find himself in the process. So it is fitting in a way that Jason and the Argonauts is such an important foundation in the world of fantasy films, just as the myth is to the history of storytelling. The film's historicity aside, the question remains of how does Jason and the Argonauts hold up as a movie? The answer is, well, a rather sad one, in the sense that it can feel quite dated while watching it. It is, of course, a movie that is over 50 years old, so there is simply no way around it except to acknowledge it. What would have been seen as incredibly impressive during its day is hard not to view as stilted thanks to being spoiled by the technology and cinema techniques we've mastered over time since then. However, the fact that the only real criticism I can level against Jason and the Argonauts is that it is an old film certainly speaks to the level of craft and quality to be found within it. The film has many strong points. Jason is a likable protagonist, and while he travels with a crew of 40-ish heroes, the film wisely only highlights a few who are truly important to the story or are fan favorites we already know, like the legendary Hercules, keeping the focus primarily on Jason and his plight. The entire film has a fitting epic tone, as our heroes journey a great distance, encountering gorgeous set pieces, often encountering and frequently battling fantastical monsters and creatures. The practical effects behind the monsters in this film were done with stop motion. On one hand, it allows for the film to feature several creatures that would otherwise be near impossible to showcase using the effects of its time, from Harpies to the Hydra to the great Colossus Talos. However, on the other hand, the lack of smoothness in the stop motion can and does result in these creatures often looking and feeling out of place. However, the most famous scene of Jason and the Argonauts actually uses this to play to its strengths. The scene where Jason and his men do battle against a group of sword and shield wielding reanimated skeletons. Here, the stiltedness of the stop motion meshes very well with the creatures and actually makes them look unearthly enough to feel rather menacing and it is also the best action sequence in the film. While the trope of reanimated skeletons didn't originate in this movie, it was certainly defined forever within it. If you ever encounter a sword and shield wielding skeleton in a fantasy RPG, it is because of this movie. 
As a retelling of the myth, it should be noted that there are some key differences between the two. Some of the changes I feel are actually better to suit the story in the form of a film, while others do make me scratch my head. The order that some events occur are altered. For instance, Jason and his crew encounter Talos at the start of their journey and not at the end. One mind-boggling change is turning the dragon that guards the Golden Fleece into the Hydra from the story of Hercules, which is fought by Jason alone without the aid of the legendary hero who is famous for slaying it. Also missing in totality is the character of Atalanta, the virgin champion of Artemis, who despite only being in certain versions of the myth, does feel missed. Overall though, Jason and the Argonauts, despite its age, remains an important film to the genres of both fantasy and action adventure. It is also, despite its changing of the source material, one of the best adaptations of Greek mythology to film. Many of the depictions we see today of skeleton warriors, harpies, and giant statues coming to life owe a lot to this film, but it is also a big influence on quest narratives we see so often in fantasy cinema. If you've ever experienced a story where the main hero must put together a team to set out on an adventure to retrieve something, whether directly or indirectly, it is fair to say Jason and the Argonauts likely played a role there. I have no choice as a film buff and someone interested in cinema's history to recommend you watch Jason and the Argonauts at least once, or at the very least, watch some of its most iconic scenes. However, if you can't get past the dated effects and the look of the film, then you will struggle to find enjoyment in the whole thing. Sadly, there is no way around that. Yet, if you can appreciate the past a certain way, when watching Jason and the Argonauts, you might just find it's much more modern than you might think.